Ray Lopez takes on Chewy Garcia Chicago Ald. Raymond. Ray. Lopez announced on Tuesday he's waging a primary against Congressman Jesus. Chewy. Garcia in the 4th District next year. Setting the stage for a battle within the Democratic Party as it grapples with issues such as persistent crime and a wave of asylum seekers. Both sides now. Lopez is a conservative Democrat who aligns with the equally conservative Chicago Police Union, and Garcia is a venerable progressive. How Lopez kicked it off. Garcia, has chosen to try to lead from the left of the left, and in the meantime, he has left. Everyone else out in the cold, the 15th Ward Alderman said during his morning announcement. Watch Lopez's full press conference here, via WGN9 Garcia pushed back. Lopez's latest run for a new office is nothing more than an attention-grabbing stunt, Garcia's campaign manager, Manny Diaz, said in a statement. Time equals 400 ms, greater than their common history. Lopez and Garcia both ran for mayor. But Lopez dropped out before petitions were due last year, and he endorsed fellow conservative Willie Wilson, who lost in the first round. Garcia would fall short, too. Lopez also made a run for the fourth congressional seat ahead of the 2018 race but dropped out before the primary. Time equals 400 ms, greater than Lopez sees a lane. The fourth congressional district includes a portion of 13 Chicago city wards and areas of 30 different suburbs, including DuPage County and the more conservative-leaning Hinsdale and Elmhurst. Redistricting has also pulled in some areas once represented by Congressman Dan Lipinski also a conservative Democrat. Time equals 400 ms, greater than Lopez's strength. He has strong support and a sizable political organization in his southwest side base, reports Tribune's John Byrne and Rick Pearson report. His challenge, in spite of what Lopez described as a robust base of support, he won't likely be backed by Mayor Brandon Johnson or the Cook County Democratic Party both of which would assign their army of volunteers to help Garcia on the ground game. Mayoral candidate Paul Vallas knows something about this. White House responds. Governor J.B. Pritzker says he's heard back from the White House about his letter asking for assistance and some organization fortitude in managing the migrant crisis in Chicago. The takeaway. They have said they want to be responsive to those things and they're kind of working down the list to see what the things are that they can do immediately and what they might be able to do in the near term, he told reporters at an unrelated event on Tuesday. Tribune's Dan Petrella reports, tensions continue to rise in Chicago communities, which are being asked to find space for the new arrivals. In the 29th Ward on the west side, community members spoke out and were visibly angry Tuesday about a plan to put migrants in the Amundsen Park Fieldhouse. Time equals 400 ms, greater than, we cannot take resources from the black community, a community that has already for decades been disinvested in, all. Chris Talia Faro said to applause. More here. Frustration about park space for migrants boils over in 29th Ward. I have compassion, but I can only go so far, by tribunes. Caroline Kubzanski, in Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood. Backlash to migrants grows in Latino community as new shelter opens, by Tribune's Laura Rodriguez Prisa and Caroline Kubzanski, in Joliet. Mayor Terry Darcy wants Supervisor Angel Contreras to withdraw application to obtain $8.6 million. In state migrant aid, by Patches John Farrick if you are Willie Wilson, Playbook would like to hear from you. Email, email protected at Danville Area Community College at 11 a.m. to give remarks at a tree dedication ceremony honoring the late state Senator Scott Bennett, at Wintrust Arena. In Chicago at 7 p.m. to give remarks at the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony. In City Hall at 10 a.m. to preside over a city council meeting. No official public events. If you've recovered from Tuesday's house drama, send me a line. Email protected. Diversity numbers among delegates trigger alarm at DNC meeting. Illinois State Representative Lisa Hernandez was a delegate for Democratic National Convention in 2012. She's now chair of the Illinois Democratic Party, the first Latina to hold that title, and is charged with formulating her state party's diversity plan. That experience from then to now, I just recognize that there is a need for an intentional process to ensure that we have diversity, Hernandez said 
speaking of the party's delegate selection process. Politico's Bracton Booker reports, first in playbook. Steve Daniels, the longtime reporter at Crane's Business, is joining the Chicago Tribune's editorial board. This is a huge coup for the Tribune. Daniels wrote news and editorials, he did both at Crane's, and is skilled at making complicated issues understandable for the broader audience. He has been a must-read for anyone wanting to understand the utility industry, especially the ins and outs of Commonwealth Edison, and that recent bribery scandal. Daniels, who's worked for Cranes since 1999, also covered banking and finance and is well-versed in Illinois government and politics. He's also a great collaborator. Congrats to the Trib and Daniels. Illinois First Lady M.K. Pritzker and Governor J.B. Pritzker hosted a dinner and reception Tuesday at the Governor's Mansion to celebrate the First Lady's new book, A House That Made History, The Illinois Governor's Mansion, Legacy of an Architectural Treasure. The First Lady is dedicating all the proceeds from the sale of the book to raise money for the Illinois Governor's Mansion's foundation. You can purchase the book here. Time equals 400 Ms. Greater than in the room. Governor's Chief of Staff Ann Caprera. Deputy Governor Andy Monar, Intersect Illinois Chair John Atkinson, Mansion Foundation Board Member Leslie Hindman and lobbyists Liz Brown-Reeves, Julie Curry and Trevor Clatfilter were among the donors that joined the dinner. What's next? Today the First Lady is holding a public event and book signing at the Abraham Lincoln Museum and Library. On October 14, she and interior designer Michael S. Smith discuss the mansion's history during a Chicago Humanities Festival event. Details here, Mayor Brandon Johnson establishes city's first chief homelessness officer. The move comes a day before a public hearing before the city council on the mayor's proposal to raise the real estate transfer tax on high-end home sales to create dedicated funding to combat homelessness, by Sun Times Emanuel Camarillo. Delayed. The vote to end tipped minimum wage is delayed because of a hiccup in the clerk's office, reports WTTW's Heather. Sharon, Damon Silo's demolition is delayed because of a federal review, by Sun Times' Brett Chase. When will Chicago's new map for the elected school board be ready? It's unclear, by Chalkbeat's Samantha Smilly, Condé Nast. Traveler names Chicago the best big city in the country via Crane's Corley J. Loop parking garages to add 300 EV charging stations with help from Comed, by Sun Times' Catherine Odom, Black Panther's medical, daycare sites part of historic district proposal. It's an effort to create a thematic historic district that would include sites in different cities but connected by a theme, writes Crane's Dennis Rodkin. Former Cook County Assessor's worker admits he helped businesses cheat on tax bills for two rounds of golf. Basilio Clausen faces up to five years in prison but is now cooperating with federal prosecutors. By Sun Times' John Seidel, notoriously slow Cook County courts will begin tracking why cases are delayed. By Tribune's Joe Marr, Becky Carroll, who heads the Sea Strategies public relations firm, has been appointed to the board of National Small Business Association Leadership Council which advocates for small businesses on a nonpartisan basis in D.C. Ashley Nelson, government relations director at McDonald's, was named board chair of the Illinois Retail Merchants Association at its annual meeting Tuesday at the Palmer House Hilton. Prior to McDonald's, Nelson did scheduling and advance for Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Time equals 400 Ms. Greater than Marcus Lamonis, the chair and CEO of Camping World has been appointed to the board of directors of Overstock.com. Via Yahoo Finance we asked what sport correlates to politics. Monica Gordon, a Cook County commissioner. Boxing. It relies on efficient strategy, intelligence, rapid decision-making and stamina. Matthew Baudet, Chicago Buildings Commissioner. Chess. Moves, counter moves, strategize, adjust and in the end you're on your own. Vince Brandes. Since 2016, mixed martial arts. Before that, it was competitive. Dancing. Mary Kay Minahan. Baseball. Because the owners make lots of promises only to leave you disappointed in the end. Dennis Pothist. Ice hockey. Hard hitting and skating around questions. Brent Pruim. An old English adage. Says football is a gentleman's game played by hooligans, and rugby is a hooligans game played by gentlemen. 
politics has become less like rugby and more like football. Judge in fraud trial imposes gag order after Trump attacks judges' aid, by politicos Erica Orden, Josh Gerstein and Kyle Cheney. Time equals 400 ms, greater than, the rudderless GOP careens toward 2024, by politicos Burgess Everett, Sarah Ferris and Ali Mutnick, acting speaker orders Nancy Pelosi to leave her Capitol hideaway office, by politicos Nicholas Wu and Daniela Diaz, former state senator Gary Dahl dies at 82. He shocked Democrats by defeating longtime state senator Pat Welch, by Shaw locals Tom Collins. Dahl lived in an RV during the Springfield legislative sessions and donated his salary to charity, according to his obit. Anne Sokolov is executive director of the New Democrat Coalition, the center-left caucus of House Democrats. She was chief of staff to Congresswoman Nikki Bajinsky, who is the group's freshman leadership representative. John Lee moves up to be chief of staff to Congresswoman Bajinsky. He was legislative director. Stephanie Bezruki has been promoted to senior advisor for the Deputy Secretary's Office of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Bezruki was Chief of Staff for the Undersecretary of Rural Development. Earlier, the Illinois native was Senior Policy Advisor for then-Congresswoman Sherry Bustos. Monday. Former Congressman Daniel Lipinski, IL-03, headlines an event in Springfield on democracy, polarization and bipartisanship. It's sponsored by University of Illinois and will be held at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum. Register here, October 16. A public hearing on the Chicago Police Department consent decree will be held by the department's independent monitoring team. Details on how to participate. Time equals 400 ms. Greater than October 17. Chicago Alg. Pat Dowell headlines a fundraiser at the Metropolitan Club. Details here are Donate Hera Tuesday's answer. Congrats to John Fritchie and Andy Shaw for correctly answering that James Hill, known as the Empire Builder, started a train line that connected Chicago to the west, including Glacier National Park. 